Welcome to the Injury Report, where we recap the injuries racked up by your favorite horror villains. Villains in horror movies are notorious for their ability to withstand a great deal of damage. Things that would turn your average person into dead meat can be easily shrugged off if you're a chainsaw-wielding madman. That's right, this time we're taking a look at Leatherface. I'm Griff Robodanger, and in this Injury Report, I'm going to look at the first two films in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre series. While killers like Jason Voorhees and Michael Myers both have an almost supernatural resistance to damage, Leatherface has always been portrayed as more of a reality-based character. So I was curious to see exactly how realistic the damage he sustains is. We begin with the iconic film that kicked off the franchise, 1974's The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. In this film, Leatherface's first damage is at the hands of his own family when... The cook beats Leatherface with a broken broomstick. While this probably doesn't feel great, it's obviously not a serious injury. Still, I always try to include anything in these videos that would land you an assault charge if you tried it on a stranger, so... Leatherface is hit in the head with a large wrench. Later in the film, final girl Sally Hardesty escapes from the Sawyer family home with Leatherface in hot pursuit. A nearby truck driver comes to her aid, throwing a large wrench at Leatherface. This impact stops Leatherface in his tracks, sends his head whipping back, and... knocks him to the ground! Leatherface falls backward onto the dirt road, his back and butt as well as the back of his head making contact with the ground. While there's always a risk of back injury or even a concussion with a fall like this, the real danger of this fall is... Leatherface's chainsaw cuts into his thigh! When Leatherface falls, he accidentally drops his running chainsaw onto his own right upper thigh. The blade instantly rips through his pants and flesh, leaving a wound several inches into his leg meat. Despite this gruesome injury, Leatherface is back on his feet moments later, dancing his iconic chainsaw ballet. Thirteen years later, we rejoin Leatherface in The Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2. Leatherface and his brother Chop Top have invaded the Kaokla radio station, where they terrorize DJ Stretch. It is here that Leatherface is blasted in the face with a fire extinguisher. Stretch shoots the contents of a fire extinguisher right into Leatherface's kisser. Apologies to those who have already seen my Halloween 4, 5, and 6 injury report, because I'm going to repeat some of the same points I made in that video's fire extinguisher scene. So I'm still not an expert on fire extinguishers, but as in Halloween 4, it appears that Stretch is using a CO2 fire extinguisher. If someone is sprayed in the face with the contents of a CO2 fire extinguisher, there are several potential consequences. Inhaling CO2 gas can lead to respiratory irritation and difficulty breathing, especially if a large amount is inhaled. CO2 gas is extremely cold when it's expelled from the extinguisher, so there's a risk of frostbite or cold burns on the skin and eyes. CO2 gas can irritate the eyes, causing redness, tearing, and potentially corneal injury if the gas is directed directly into the eyes. Even though Bubba has an extra layer of... facial protection, if you will, his eyes and the area around them is still directly exposed. The blast from the fire extinguisher... causes Leatherface to fall on his back. Leatherface falls backward onto the hardwood floor. His back hits the ground first, and it seems like the back of his neck makes a nasty snap to the floor. On the plus side, he does remember to keep his chainsaw away from his body this time, avoiding accidental self-mutilation. Later in the movie, Leatherface is kicked in the butt by his brother. Once again, not a particularly harmful attack, but according to this Ask a Lawyer website I found, this action could technically be considered assault in the state of Texas. In the film's climax, Leatherface battles former Texas Ranger Lefty Enright in an epic chainsaw duel. In this battle, Leatherface is kneed in the gut and kicked in the face. This kick sends Leatherface reeling backwards into this post. The fight then moves to the top of the Sawyer dinner table. Lefty ducks to narrowly avoid Bubba's swing, countering with a chainsaw uppercut that... impales Leatherface through the abdomen with the chainsaw. For the first time in the franchise, Leatherface suffers an injury that, frankly, should put him down on the spot. Lefty thrusts his chainsaw in and out of Bubba's torso. The saw goes all the way through his body, the tip of the still-running saw protruding out of Leatherface's back. Leatherface's innards begin spilling out of his body, as the chainsaw teeth continue to grind his organs into a gory pulp. 
In reality, this attack should cause massive and catastrophic damage to internal organs, including the liver, intestines, and major blood vessels, which in turn would lead to profuse bleeding, shock, and likely loss of consciousness. The pain from such an injury would be excruciating, making any kind of physical exertion or continued combat virtually impossible. Given the location and depth of the attack, it's highly likely that the spinal cord and major nerves would be damaged, potentially leading to paralysis. Despite all of this, despite the fact that this running chainsaw is still lodged into his body, Leatherface shrugs off the injury and continues fighting with Lefty. The battle goes on until Grandpa accidentally hits Bubba in the face with his mallet. Grandpa tries to help his grandson by throwing his trusty brain-bashing mallet at Lefty, but the old man's timing isn't so great. He misses and beans Leatherface with it instead, causing him to fall backwards onto their wooden dinner table. Bubba lands hard on the table, causing him to lose control of his chainsaw, which cuts through the table and saws up the cook, who was hiding under the table. This causes the cook to drop a live grenade he'd been holding. The grenade goes off and... Leatherface gets caught in the explosion. This happens off screen, so we really don't know the extent of the damage Leatherface suffers from the grenade. We do hear a loud bang and see a flash as Chop Top chases stretch a good distance from the blast, which tells me that this was a decent sized explosion. It's also very likely that this explosion caused the already shaky underground structure to completely cave in, meaning Leatherface and the others were also struck with and buried under heavy debris. It should be noted that Leatherface, Lefty, and everyone else near the explosion isn't heard from again for the rest of the film, the implication being that they were all seriously injured or even killed. Between the grenade and Leatherface's pureed innards, it's no wonder every sequel after this either retcons this film away or conveniently avoids going into too much detail about it. Before I do the final rundown, I want to mention a few risky things Leatherface does that should lead to injuries and should never be attempted. Things like using a corpse as a bullet shield, walking through a glass door, Kool-Aid manning through a wall, demolishing a radio station ceiling and windows with his chainsaw, bashing his head repeatedly into a wire light fixture. So here's the final rundown of Leatherface's injuries from the first two Texas Chainsaw Massacre films. Bubba is beaten with a broomstick, hit with a wrench, knocked to the ground, chainsawed in the leg, extinguished in the face, knocked to the floor, kicked in the ass, kneed in the gut, kicked in the face, impaled with a chainsaw, beamed with a hammer, knocked onto a table, and blown up with a grenade. And there it is, the damage sustained by Leatherface in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Parts 1 and 2. Thanks for watching this episode of Injury Report. If you like this video and want to see more like it, make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss future videos. For now, here's some other stuff you might enjoy, and until next time, later Danger Seekers.